Welcome to part two of my two-in-one, two-in-one laptop review. Uh, so if you missed part one, I'll put the link up here for you to go and check that out. Uh, so we're looking at the HP EliteBook X360, a convertible two-in-one laptop, and also the HP Elite X2, which is a detachable two-in-one laptop. Alright guys, so not only did I benchmark the X360 and the X2, I also threw a couple other devices that are in kind of the same class um, for a little bit extra comparative data. The Lenovo T460S and the Surface Pro 4 are also going to be in these benchmarks. So let's go over the specs real quick. The Elite X2 is running the Core M7 6Y75. Uh, so marketing material will tell you that that's roughly equivalent to the Core i5 6300U. Uh, so it runs at a base clock of 1.2 gigahertz and a max turbo of 3.1. Uh, RAM is 8 gigabytes of DDR3L, uh, low power DDR3 at 1866. Uh, uses uh, M.2 SATA SSD at 512 gigabytes, Intel HD Graphics 515, and a 12 inch display at 1920 by 1280. The EliteBook X360 is rocking the Intel Core i5 7300U, so the KB Lake SKU. Uh, base speed is 2.6 gigahertz. Max turbo is 3.5 gigahertz. Uh, RAM is 8 gigabytes of DDR4 2133. Uh, M.2 NVMe SSD at 512 gigabytes. An Intel HD Graphics 620, 13.3 inch display at 1920 by 1080. Now, what are the two competitors? Uh, Surface Pro 4 and T460s. They're both rocking the i5 6300U. Base 2.4 and max turbo 3.0 gigahertz. The Surface Pro is running 8 gigabytes of DDR3 low uh, power at 1600 megahertz, and the 460S 8 gigs of DDR4 2133. They're both using Intel HD Graphics 520. The Surface Pro is using a 512 gig M.2 NVMe SSD, and the 460S is using a 240 gigabyte M.2 SATA SSD. Uh, the Surface Pro is a 12.3 inch screen at 2736 by 1824, an extremely odd and high resolution. The T460S is a 14.1 inch at 1920 by 1080. Alright, so now that that's out the way, let's go ahead and jump into the benchmarks and see how they all performed. So first we'll take a look at Geekbench. Uh, I ran each test three times and then averaged out the results from the three runs. So in single core performance, you can see the X360 comes out on top, clearly thanks to the higher clock speed that it runs on the KB Lake i5. Uh, the T460S comes trailing behind by about 600 points, uh, probably closer to 550. The Surface Pro just before that, and the X2 trailing in last. We see the same trend in multi-threaded performance, again, probably due to the higher clock speed on the X360. Uh, another thing to note that I didn't mention in the specs but was mentioned in the first video is that the X2 uh, is a passively cooled device so when it gets hot it's going to have to turn its clock speed down to control thermals. It does not have the option of ramping up a fan like the other three devices do. So next up is Cinebench. Uh, Cinebench I ran five times in a row and averaged out the results uh, mostly because it just runs pretty quickly so it's easier to do five times and average them. And we see kind of the same trend here. So we see kind of the same trend here in Cinebench. The X360 comes out on top in single and multi-core performance. The T460S trails behind it by a fairly significant amount with the Surface Pro 4 just a few points behind. And then the X2 comes in dead last. So next up is the Blender render. Um, I don't expect anybody to really do any rendering on these devices, but the main reason I wanted to use this test um, with the BMW benchmark and the reason that I ran uh, most of these tests back to back and then averaged a certain number of them is to help expose any um, thermal issues with the device. Mainly looking at the X2 being passively cooled, how is that going to handle an extended workload which would also translate into how is it going to handle higher ambient temperatures with it not being able to actively cool itself. So we look here at the Blender render and this is in time and seconds. You can see the Elite X2 it by far took the longest. 
to get this done. With the X360 and the T460S coming in, actually the 460S came in a little bit ahead in this one, which I'm not exactly sure why, because none of the other uh, tests I did support it being faster than the X360, um, but in this case it came in about uh, 8 seconds faster than the 360. Uh, when you're talking times in, of this length, that's you know a very marginal difference. Uh, Surface Pro 4 kind of fell a little behind the 460 and the X360, but again, the X2 just kind of fell flat on its face for this test. Okay, so the next thing I did was run the PC Mark 8 benchmark. Uh, this is just a basic edition, uh, so only had the three, uh, the Work Creative and Home benchmarks available to me. But if we look at these, we see, again, the same trend of the X360 coming out on top with the highest score, the T460S trailing behind it by a fair margin, and for the most part, the Surface Pro is only a few points behind the T460S, except for in the work benchmark. For some reason, um, the Surface Pro just completely bombed on this test. Um, I have a slight theory on that, we'll jump in that into just a minute, um, but again, other than work and every other test you see this pattern of X360 on top, T460S trailing behind by a, a good margin, uh, Surface Pro just behind the 460S, and then the X2 coming in dead last in every test. So those are all the actual benchmarks that were run, so you can see a clear pattern here, the X360 took the cake on every test in this, in this lineup. Um, all these devices are, I guess you'd call roughly in the same price range. I believe the Surface Pro and the X2 were kind of at the top end there, and then the uh, you know, X360 then trailed by the, the 460S as far as price point goes as configured in these tests. So I do have one more test I want to look at. So I ran Ida64 on each of these devices for half an hour and logged their clock speed and temperature at start, 15 minutes, and 30 minutes. Uh, and so the whole point of this was kind of just to drive home this point of the X2 and the issues it's going to have with heat soak with it not having a fan to help dissipate the heat that is being generated by its chip. So once it's in use for an extended period of time to do work, you're going to see a degradation in performance um, that I think just doesn't make the X2 worthwhile, in my opinion. Uh, to me, between the two of them, the X360, uh, you get more power and I think, in, again, in my personal opinion, more usability out of the device for a lower cost. But anyways, let's take a look at the Ida64 stress test that I did. So first we're going to look at temperature over time. Uh, so you see at start, uh, the Surface Pro and um, X2 are the highest at 49 degrees, the Elite X360 at 43, and the X2 at 41. After 15 minutes, the X2 pegs up to 79, the T460S and X360 are at 74 and 73 degrees Celsius, respectively, and the Surface Pro is at 57. This is where things get interesting, and this is where kind of my theory about the workload um, test in PC Mark being the lowest on the Surface Pro comes into play. So fast forward again another 15 minutes, and at 30 minutes of stress testing on Ida64, we're at 79 on the X2, 74 on the 460S, and 73 on the X360, and the Surface Pro 4 is at 60 degrees Celsius on the CPU. Uh, for some reason, it seems Microsoft has set up the uh, Surface Pro to run as cool as it can versus trying to stay within a safe limit and run as fast as it can. Um, so that's kind of an odd situation there. So let's go and take a look at the clock speed over time. Again, this correlates uh, hand in hand with temperatures that you're seeing in the chart here. And so here we see the clock speeds charted out over time at 0, 15, and 30 minutes. So we start out with the X360 at the top at 3,492 MHz, so 3.5 GHz, so I'm going to round these down to make them easier. And the other three all started at basically 2.9 GHz. After 15 minutes, the X360 is throttled back to 2.9 GHz, the 460S is at 2.8, and both the X2 and the uh, Surface Pro have gone down to 2.1 GHz. After 30 minutes, the X360 is still holding solid at 2.9. The 460S has now dropped to 2.6, losing even more performance. The Surface Pro has picked back up a bit, hitting 2.5 GHz. And the X2 is still down in the dumps at 2.1 GHz after 30 minutes. Alright guys, so 
again, the benchmarks here clearly show that the X360 is the top dog device in this test. It has outperformed the X2 by leaps and bounds in every single test here, um, and even outperformed the 460S and the Surface Pro, both running the 6300 UI5. Uh, again, not surprising, the X360 is running the 7300U. I was a little surprised, however, at how much it beat the 460S and, and Surface Pro 4 by, uh, because in a lot of these tests, the X360 actually took over by quite a decent margin. Alright guys, so stay tuned for part 3 of this series where I'm actually going to do a teardown on the X2 and the X360 and kind of give you a look at their uh, repairability, how uh, upgradable or repairable they're going to be for you if you do buy this device and end up using it for a while and have to do some sort of service to it. So go ahead and hit that like button if you liked the video, hit the dislike if you didn't like it, and leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. Uh, if there's anything you want to see me do different or any other tests you want to see run on these devices. Um, I didn't do any storage testing on them because, I mean, they're all using SSDs, you know, a couple of NVMEs and a couple of SATA SSDs. We know how SATA and NVMe perform against each other. I mean, they're you're talking at that point speeds where on a user experience like this for a business laptop is really not going to make a difference. Uh, to be perfectly honest, you're not going to really notice any day-to-day -day usage difference between a uh, SATA SSD and an NVMe SSD. You know, maybe a few seconds here and there in certain applications and boot-up times, but again, nothing that's going to majorly impact the user experience or the usability of the device. Alright guys, go ahead and hit that like button if you liked the video, hit the dislike if you didn't like it, and make sure you get subscribed to the channel if you want to keep up to date on all the latest content and don't want to miss part 3 of this video series. Uh, make sure you hit that little bell icon next to the subscribe button after you get subscribed so you don't miss any notifications from YouTube. Also, be sure to check out my new live stream series that I'm doing with If That's the Case uh, every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. Uh, this week's episode was on my channel. Next week's will be on his channel, so I'll put my channel somewhere over here and his channel somewhere over here and maybe another video somewhere up over here for you guys to check out. Until next time, it's Johnny O signing off.